welcome to this uh, very important program, Yali Regional Leadership uh, Training Program. My name is Dr. Thomas Boabin. Uh, I'm in Accra, Ghana. I teach at the University of Ghana Business School. And I am happy for the opportunity to take you through some of the models as part of the training. I am going to facilitate this particular topic, leadership and accountability. And because of the nature of the topic, we're going to organize it under three main sessions. The first session will look at ethical leadership. The second part will look at culture and leadership, and the final part we look at ethics and corruption. But I'll start with culture and uh, leadership. When we talk about culture and leadership, it is quite broad. And so we are going to look at or focus on five specific uh, areas. The first is to try and understand the concept of culture and cultural relativism. We will also try to appreciate, to accept, to understand the influence of societal culture on leadership and leadership styles. Understanding the role of culture in deciding on whatever leadership style we adopt will also be part of the things you consider. And then we will look at how national culture affects our ability to exercise uh, leadership. And then finally, but not the least, we look at cultural relativism and diversity to help us avoid some of the things that may affect our leadership effectiveness. And so to achieve this, the whole session is divided into three. We try to define culture. And then we try to look into some concepts that relate to culture. And then we will end the session with, as I said earlier on, culture and organizational uh, diversity. So let's start with the concept of culture. Culture has been defined differently. But for our purpose, we are going to look at culture as how Stada put it as a mental programming. And so we're talking about culture as a shared system of meanings, beliefs, values, and behaviors through which experience is interpreted and carried out. We need to understand the fact that culture is meaningful only to the people who belong to a particular group. And so therefore, when you talk about a group culture, we are talking about an experience, interpretation, understanding that that group members alone are assigned to situations. And there are so many things that define culture. So for instance, in addition to the refinement of the mind, when we talk about culture, we are talking about certain things that may be seen as menial, as uh, irrelevant, which includes greetings, how people greet have different meanings. For instance, someone may just point their thumb up to a particular culture. It means you are doing well. It means uh, keep it up. In other cultures, it may mean uh, insulting. And so eating, how people eat. Some of you, if you come to my, my country and I invite you and you see how I eat certain types of food, sometimes I may be compared to use both hands, fingers. Uh, some can't eat that same food without using uh, a cutlery. And so there are so many things in life that define the culture of people. Showing or not showing feelings. In some cultures, guests are expected to express uh, pain and the feeling of uh, 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 same. Whilst men or boys who go through similar experience are not expected to express uh, the same. And so it is very important for us to 
understand the concept of uh, culture. So we're looking at culture as something that is shared by groups. So one, culture is shared, and two, it is learned. No one in this world is born with culture. And so the human personality that we see is a combination of two important things. And these are how you were born, which is the base here. How, how you were born, that is the human nature which we acquire from our parents. So every human being in this world has that nature. However, even if you are twins, and one is placed in Ghana and the other is placed in the Sierra Leone, for instance, and you are brought back in 18 years' time, you will definitely exhibit different attitudes, you eat different food, you have different liking, different preferences, and different value system. And that is the culture. What acts, what we experience, what we are able to acquire, in our environment to add to the human nature to give us the personality who we are is what we mean by culture. So culture is something that we acquire through socialization. You could be with your parents and still not belong to their culture. You may be part of a group, it could be a student group or work group that you share everything. You eat things together and you like particular type of songs and you don't like others. So the personality we see, who you are, is very important for us to understand that it is partly because of who gave birth to you and then what you did with your life, the school you attended. So sometimes some parents can talk about, or we see people and we say, that, ah, but they are from the same parents. Why is it that one is this and one is that? It's simply because they had different experiences. So when you talk about the human personality, you must understand that your personality is a combination of these two things. And this has a serious implication on your leadership abilities and your leadership uh, style. And so as we go along, we need to understand that every personality consists of things that we acquire from our parents, the genes, the biological makeup, and then things we acquire for being part of a group. And that is the culture we're talking about. If we understand it from this point, then we need to accept the fact that cultures are different. Because if you acquire the culture from the group that you are part, and all of us cannot be part of the same group, then it means we all belong to different cultures. So the things you acquire for being a Muslim, the attitude, the greetings, the behaviors, the food that you don't eat because you attend an Adventist church or because you are a Catholic, it makes you unique. And so if we are going to be leaders, later on we relate it to leadership, if you are going to be leaders, it is important for us to understand that whoever you are, you are unique from any other person. Those who work with you as colleagues, those who work under you as uh, subordinates are all different from who you are. How do you then get these people along as we all learned as the definition of leadership? Ability to get people along to achieve objectives without coercing them. How do you convince people to abandon their culture? Or how do you convince people to follow your style when the two of you are completely different. And that brings us to a very important concept of cultural relativism. If you are able to accept and understand the concept of cultural relativism, it shouldn't be difficult at all. Of course, we need to work at it. And what is cultural relativism? It simply means that no culture is superior or no culture is inferior. What this means is that the training that you have acquired as a leader the education and everything now, by virtue of your certificate or by appointment, you are now leading people. What it means is that the ways by which you do your things, the things you like and the things you dislike, are never superior to what your subordinates prefer. And so therefore, it would be wrong for us to impose certain things on people. Otherwise, you cannot be effective uh, leader. 
And so we say that cultural relativism affects that one culture has no absolute criteria for judging the activities of another culture as low or noble. And I know all of you will be thinking about this issue. It's a very controversial issue. The people decided that those of us in Sierra Leone or in Nigeria or in La Côte d'Ivoire, we want to do things this way. No one has the right, whether the person is an European or American or a Ghanaian, to go and say that this way of doing things is bad. Stop it and follow how I am doing mine. No. Because it might not be meaningful to you, but it is meaningful to the people. And you are a leader. That's what we are going to do. We are going to communities to tell them that, oh, please, how these things are done is part of the reasons why we are not developing, we are still uh, poor. And so is it not possible for us to leave that one and follow this that you recommend to them? If you say that, you are saying that the way that you are proposing to them is superior to what they are doing. It is possible, the culture, no one is superior, but the effect of culture, the implications of our cultural practices on our day-to-day -day activities could be negative. And so therefore, as leader, you're trying to convince people to leave the practices that may bring negative consequences in their lives and adopt the culture that will bring positive implications. And this simply means that we don't go with the mentality that this is better. No, it might be appropriate, but not better. At the time, or because of what you want to do, you think living that way of doing things and doing this way is better. So cultural relativism is very important for all of us, especially those of us in Africa and West Africa. Because the way we do our things, please, they are as equally good and important as the way all others do their things. And that is why we have problems as young leaders. Why? Because some of us already, you have been to Europe and North America and other countries or across Africa, you've encountered certain experiences, certain cultures, and you perceive them as uh, very useful or sometimes you have no option if you are educated in the US. You have no option before you realize you have the culture. If you are not careful and you interpret that behavior because it's coming from a certain part of the world as superior to what the people we are working with have and the way they do the things, I can assure you, you will never achieve anything. We need to accept this fact, even if we see negative effects, so that we can help them to drop the negative effect. And that is what we mean by leadership and effective uh, leadership. And so it is important. And one interesting thing about culture that we need to understand is its multiplicity. Every human being belongs to several cultures. What this means is that as a human being, sometimes your cultures do conflict. We are all Ghanaians, we are all Sierra Leoneans, we are all Nigerians. There are things that are so unique to Nigerians. There are things that are so unique to Sierra Leoneans. There are things that are so unique to Ghanaians. And even we can have the African culture. For instance, male dominance in whatever we do. The respect that we expect women to accord males. You can relate it across the continent, the African continent, or West Africa. You find it in Nigeria, you find it in Ghana, you find it in Sierra Leone, you find it in almost all the countries that uh, we have in a part of the world. And this is something unique to us. So those who come from Canada and the US and the other, when they come and they see it, they get shocked, which we call cultural shock. In the same way, if it's in Ghana and you go below that to your region, the country, Ghana, is divided into 10 regions. Nigeria, you have states. And even within the states, you have local government. At that level, there are things that are so unique. Even food you eat, you go to every part of Africa, you enter the country, depending on the location, the region you are in, determine the food that you can find to eat. And so it is very important for us to understand that at that level also, we have a different culture. So you are an African, you have a way of doing things, and then you are a Ghanaian, you have ways of doing things, and then 
if you come to Ghana, for instance, you are a gun, and you have the way guns do their thing, which is different from how the Ashantis do uh, their things. If you are in the Sierra Leone, if you are in the Makendi area, the northern part where I stayed for some time, there are ways of doing things. And if you are in the capital too, even if you are in Lungi, there are ways of doing things because of the water. You know, the culture is a way by which people can live comfortably. And so they are on island. The way they do their things can never be the same as Makendi where the people uh, are in the north and they have dry land and everything. So it is important for us to understand that every single individual belongs to so many cultures. Aside this, you all belong to religion. If you're Muslim, the Muslims have ways of doing things. There are food that they don't eat. Then they don't drink because you're a Muslim. And then aside that, you belong to an organization. Your organization has ways of doing things. How you even have to greet. In the organization is not the same as how you have to greet when you go to the mosque. And sometimes these things do conflict. And people will come with all these baggages. And we are supposed to lead them, to facilitate, to guide them, to ensure that we achieve whatever we want uh, to achieve. So this is the first part, as I mentioned to you, of trying to understand the concept of culture. Whenever you see people doing things, please let's understand that they know why they are doing it. Whether we like it or not, they have meaning. If you want to influence them, we cannot impose. We first need to accept and we try to understand so we can help them to do what they are supposed to do. Mm -hmm.